All right, so at this point, I took the template, we copied it and we pasted it uh, to start to use it as our PG welcome. I, I forgot about this here. I, I would like to use the naming convention of all of our sections are going to have an ID of PG something, shorthand for page. So my uh, my welcome screen, my welcome section has an ID of PG welcome. And I'm usually going to refer to these screens as something like PG welcome, PG logout. You know, I'm going to refer to it that way. So that means that uh, we need to make a little change here in our template file where I said when you click on the home screen, it's going to go to the section of home or the save comic is going to go to the section of save comic. Whoops, I meant for that to be PG home, PG save comic, PG view comic. It's an easy fix and we caught it early on. So let's go back here to wherever your original template section is and call that PG home, capital H on that. And then PG save comic is what I was saying about the words, the words past the first word. It's very common in most programming languages that when you have words run together, you don't want the space there at all. That's going to cause problems. You want them run, run together. But when it's all lowercase, it's hard to read. So it's a very common practice to put the second and third and fourth words as a capital letter. You could also capitalize your very first letter. It is completely up to you how you want to do it. But doing it this way is very common. It's called intercaps or camel caps because it's like, it's like the humps of a camel. See that? Two humps on the camel right there. Or there's the one hump of that one camel, right? Dromedary and bromiary, whatever the camels are called. Uh, dromedary, bromiary, whatever they're called. This is completely optional, and the main reason is because the instructor wants it. Let's say the client, the client wants it. Now, the reason I'm adding the PG again is just for me, when I'm looking at hundreds of lines of code, and if I'm looking at this out of context, I can tell this is related to a page in my app. So I will be using prefixes here and there in the different parts of the code so at a glance I can tell what it's supposed to relate to. So short answer is because the instructor wants it. Long answer is because it helps me to identify my code at a glance. And I want to keep consistent. We did PG welcome. We could have called it ID equals welcome. And I want to call it PG welcome because it's our welcome page, our welcome screen. From this welcome screen, this is the part where the user will be able to choose um, sign up for a new account or log in um, to your existing account. So what we'll do here is, for the moment we will make it very obvious and then we'll streamline it a little later. We want to have two obvious buttons, one button that says uh, log in and one, but one button that says sign up. So within the paragraph here, we're going to create a sign up button and a log in button. Okay, well, buttons are going to be links. So the A tab or the A tag. An active link. This is a button that's going to go to the sign up screen, the sign up section, PG sign up. This is going to be a button that will go to our login screen, our login section, PG login. These don't exist at the moment, so these will be broken links. href pound PG sign up. Conti conf uh, continuing my naming conventions pound pg login. Very important to have the pound sign or the hash mark, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, um, pound sign. That means it's, a, it's an ID. Somewhere in the app is something that has an ID of pg login. Something somewhere in our app has an ID of pg sign up. I want these uh, plain old. I want these plain old links to look like real buttons. 
we have jQuery Mobile. So what do we do to upgrade these plain old links to real buttons? Data role attribute of button. Data roll of button. So again, especially as a beginner, uh, be careful here, right? Open quote, end quote, space, another attribute, open quote, end quote. All of that is within the angle bracket of the first tag, then the visible content, then slash, end of the tag. Now these have been upgraded to be to behave like buttons. I want to add um, some icons to this data dash icon. There is an arrow dash R. There is an arrow that points to the right that I'd like to use here. We'll be able to use our own custom icons, of course, later. <coughs> For the login, I want instead an icon of user. You've got this icon of a, of a person, of a person's silhouette. Even if perhaps the person doesn't quite understand the word login, if they see a little person icon, it might give them the impression this is related to an account, a user account. I want to add an animation so that we go from one screen to another. What is the uh, what is the data attribute here? Transition. Yes. And I want to do here a flip animation. Data transition. Slide up. Now I'm doing two different animations here. And I'll cover it a little bit more as we talk about concepts of UX, of user experience design. Um, but there's a whole study and a field and a theory about making interfaces that are useful for people, that are easy to understand. jQuery Mobile, I believe, is built in, is very good about, about that, creating interfaces that make sense. One aspect of user experience, of UX, user experience design, UX design, is, for example, animations. We have the ability to put like six different animations. And on every one of my buttons, I could have a different animation. The problem with that is that's bad user experience. If you think about the apps that you use nowadays, you click a, you tap a button and it does an action with a certain animation. and Oftentimes, the same animation is used for different buttons because they're all conceptually the same. I'm going to move from screen to screen so they all animate from left to right. But then when you do something different, there's often a different animation to catch your attention about you're doing something different. Here I've got a flip animation to catch the person's attention. You're doing the action of signing up. And I've got the slide up animation to catch the attention of you're going to sign in. When we're in the main app, we're not going to use a bunch of different animations. You're going to go from screen to screen with the same animation to keep you conceptually in the same, in, in the same um, set of actions. And it'll make more sense as we do it, but just as a note here, the short answer is don't put in 20 different animations just because you can. Put in you know two or three or one or two or three animations um, so that they're all conceptually the same idea to not confuse your users. Because when you create your app, you've got it in your mind. It works like this, it should work like that, it should behave like this. But when a person visits your app for the first time, they're lost. They have to get around. What does that button do? What happened on screen? Why did it play that sound? Everything is brand new. So to make things as easy as possible, we want to use common idioms, common terminology, common icons, and such. And I'll touch on that as we go through the class. But if I were to look at my project at the moment in the browser, that's what it looks like so far. 
title, welcome message, I could put graphics. We'll, we'll, we'll make it look nicer as we go on. We're just setting up a skeleton. We've got a button to sign up, button to log in. I actually want to move this icon to the right of the button. I'd like it on the right side. But the button looks fine. The buttons look fine. I, I want to click. It, sh it should either go nowhere or give you an error. That's normal. There is no sign up screen yet. There is no login screen yet. But we're setting up the skeleton. I want to move the icon to the right of the button. So here's another attribute. Um, the order of most of the code does matter. Um, not exactly in this example here, but I want to put data dash icon POS before data transition. No real big reason. It'll still work if I do a data icon position after the transition. But just for aesthetically and perhaps my OCD, I want mm -hmm. them in the same order that I've already written them before. I want the data transition to be the last one, the last one. If I'm going to change the position of this icon, I want it between the icon and the transition. In this case, the order of it doesn't matter. Uh, but just for aesthetics in my code, I want it here. Speaking of aesthetics in my code, it torments me that this data is here, when it will look so much nicer here. And then this one here. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this. But as you create hundreds of lines of code, even the simple things of tabbing helps you in terms of reading your code, debugging your code. It's not just an OCD thing that things need to line up. This stuff here that lines up is helpful also for reading and debugging your code. Now when I look at it here in, in general like that, see how that's lining up here. I can quickly, if I made a mistake, I can go in, where's my mistake? Oh, I, re I wrote this wrong. I, wrote, I, I forgot the quote. And therefore, it's back one space. Data icon, data icon position. Well, technically, then I would move this over here to line up with that. If I want to be really OCD, which I do, so I will move this over here. I don't have a data icon position on my login. So that's, again, visually, it's empty there. That's fine. I don't have that property, th that attribute. So that's fine. That's optional. You can keep it all lined up with spaces how you did it before. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to often do this, especially when we get to a lot of repetitive code. OK, so. I'm going to set up our screen to show our sign up interface. We need a new screen. We need our new, a whole new section header, blah, blah, blah. We can take the template, copy and paste it, to create a PG sign up. But my PG sign up is actually going to look a little bit more like PG welcome. So it's going to be more efficient to copy the PG welcome section and use that one because I don't need a footer. I don't need the nav bar, but I do need the header and I need some simple content in the main article. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to recommend to copy the whole welcome section and place it after this welcome but before template. So PG welcome, copy it and paste it to create a PG sign up, and then PG template. I'm copying the welcome. I'm going to paste it after welcome. So I'm copying the whole welcome. I'm pasting it after welcome, but before template. Then I can say start sign up screen and sign up screen 
This section now has an ID of PG sign up. The H1 will say sign up. And I'm going to remove these buttons. I copied the existing PG welcome, pasted it after itself. There it is where it ended before, and changed some of these details. The most important one is the ID. Only one section in the whole app basically can have a certain ID. Nothing else can have PG welcome. Nothing else can have PG sign up as the ID. Only one thing in all of our 300 lines of code, 1,000 lines of code, can have that unique identifier, because it's a unique identifier. To see if this is working so far, I can run it in the browser. I should be able to click on Sign Up. I'm in my Sign Up screen. There's no other navigation, which we'll fix in a moment. When we go back, OK, login doesn't work yet. We have no login screen. We'll do that in a moment. At the very least, I should be able to click on Sign Up, and it goes to a Sign Up screen. And that Sign Up screen is based on the Welcome screen. Let's pause there. Did everyone get that? Anyone run into a speed bump? Did everyone get that Sign Up screen?
All right, so um, here's something that you might not have had to think about at the moment. If I run the project, and uh, I'm going to, if I run the project and I look at it in terms of the browser here, um, in the web browser, I have back and forward buttons, yes. But if I'm looking at it as a device, let's say I'm looking at it as, the, as an iPhone 10, and I go into sign up. Okay, so I'm looking at the project there. I don't have a back button. No, I'm not talking about the back button in the browser. There is no back button on the iPhone. There's a back button on the Android device and maybe other devices. But this back button is only there temporarily as we're testing our project in a browser. Eventually, when we test it on a real device or in a more powerful device emulator, there's no back button on every device. Therefore, in this screen, I'm stuck. So we have a simple way to create a back button in the screen to take us back to the previous screen. We don't need a big complex nav bar. We have a way to create an easy little back button. So in PG sign up, in PG sign up, let's create a back button. And it goes right here. In um, in, in PG sign up at approximately line 31, data role header, data position fixed, we need a new attribute here. In the header of sign up, a new attribute. This one's pretty funny. Data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. So the point of here is, in the header of this particular section, we're adding a simple back button. Go ahead and save it and run it, and see it. So when I run it, I go to sign up, I have a back button. Now, let me head off the, let me head off the question here. I'm writing my code. I'm, I wrote exactly what you wrote. I press refresh, no back button. If you refresh from the sign up screen, there will be no back button because there is no back history to go back to. If you refresh from the home screen and go to sign up, now there is a back history. If you are to refresh your code in sign up, no back history, no back button. That's normal. This will never happen on a device. 
On a device, you must get to the sign-up screen coming from the home screen, so it will always be there. Us beta testing it here, this always happens and people haven't asked yet because I, I cut you off before you asked. I'm sure someone was going to ask. Because where's my back button? Well, if you refresh without history, there's no back button. So you have to refresh over here, and you'll see it. There'll be a couple of times throughout our development that that will happen if you refresh at a certain point in the in the flow of the app. It won't quite behave like a real app because you're breaking the flow. You're in the browser, not a real app. <coughs> question? Thought I saw a question right there. Okay. So if you see your back button, great. If you don't, you refreshed wrong. Back. We can change that icon, we can change that text, we'll do that later. But it's just a simple back button to take us back. Now as we're running our, our, as we're writing our code here and we go up to run, have you noticed that I have not been going up to the run menu and my code pops up somehow with some sort of magic? I pop up my, my latest code right away without going to the menu. Well, just like there's a keyboard shortcut to quickly save, hopefully you're not moving your mouse all the way to the top file save, not wasting your time. Hopefully you're not wasting your time moving your hand all the way across the screen to click save. Hopefully you're using a keyboard shortcut control S. Hopefully you're not wasting your time going up to run menu, launch Firefox, you're using a keyboard shortcut. Handy, easy to remember shortcut, control, alt, x, shift. X. That launches Firefox. Control Alt Shift R launches Chrome. Control Alt Shift I launches Internet Explorer. So that's what I'm doing. I have my hand on the keyboard. You can do it with one hand with practice. Alt Control Shift R uh, Chrome. Alt Control Shift X one hand uh, Firefox. So that's I automatically. doesn't save it automatically. You still have to save it. Control S and then Control Shift Alt X. So I would recommend, as often as possible, try to memorize these shortcuts. Moving your hand across the screen takes half a second, but those seconds add up. And it also adds up with your carpal tunnel syndrome repetitive stress action. So, keyboard shortcuts. On the Mac, they're different, of course. In brackets, they're different, of course. In Sublime, they're different, of course. But I'm focusing on um, notepad. And so what I've got so far, welcome screen, sign up screen, back. Let's uh, set up our login screen. There's nothing interesting happening on these screens yet. We'll get to it, of course. But I want to set up the ability to go to the login screen. I want that the same way, actually, the same sort of interface as PG sign up, PG welcome. So actually, that'll be a great example for you to try it. We've done this tw twice already, creating PG welcome, PG sign up. You challenge yourself in trying to create PG login and make sure the button works. Try that. Call me over when you've got it working. Then I'll do it. Create your PG login based on what we've already done. You should be able to do it with a little effort. So create a PG login screen, same as PG sign up.
So it uh, shouldn't be too tricky. You want to basically copy and paste your PG sign up chunk of code. Copy and paste PG sign up, change a little bit of it so it's PG log in. And then it should work. So you've got it working. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand and show me. See how you're doing it. to work very good. If you didn't get a chance to show me, that's okay. I trust you. Um, I won't go on in just a moment. Yes. Go ahead and run it.
It was this line right here. Yeah. No, that one right there. All right, so uh, let's move on here. So uh, we've got here a uh, basic uh, interface. We've got the welcome screen. We've got the welcome screen, PG welcome, so that the person can decide, um, are you a new user or returning user? Well, they click on P, they click on sign up, they go to PG sign up, easy. Then um, actually then they need to create an account, they'll go to PG uh, sign up or login. Now we will streamline a lot of this process. We can't quite do it yet because let's say I've already created an account, I've already signed in, why do I have to log in again? We of course will set that up so that it, re it remembers you and you don't have to sign in again. We'll get to that later when we get to the JavaScript. Um, the idea also then is, okay, if I create an account here, next I want it to automatically take me to log in with that account info. We'll set that up too in JavaScript. Ultimately, when you create an account or when you log in, finally then you get to PG, uh, PG Home, the home screen of the main app. Let's create PG, PG Home. That one is the one that's going to take advantage of the whole thing about the nav bar and the footer and everything. So in that case, I do want to copy the template. Let's uh, copy our whole start template, end template chunk. I want all of it because I want the footer, I want the nav bar, and I will paste it after template. True or false? False. Template's going to be the very last one because we're never going to see that screen. The user will never get to that screen. So the order of the things does matter. And so the thing is, yes, copy your template and paste it above your template after the login screen. And we're going to change the details here. Start welcome screen. End welcome screen. ID now is uh, PG, uh, PG home. All right, start home screen, end home screen, PG, PG home. So after you copy that, start home screen, end home screen, ID, PG home, H1, the name of the app again, CBDB. I'm going to keep that nav bar, obviously, because we're going to want to go from home screen to save comics screen to view comics screen, so we'll leave that intact. Um, in the article H2, we'll say uh, something like um, number one comic app. And then in the paragraph here, CBDB helps you save your comic library. We'll add pictures and other more meaningful stuff and colors later. We're just creating the basic interface at the moment. In the footer, I want to add the copyright notice. Copyright symbol, the year, and uh, the name of your the name of your app design studio. You are an app developer. The moment you start to create an app, you don't have to go to any sort of official body to become an app developer. Later in part three of the class, we do need to create an app account, an app developer account at the app stores to publish our app. But as we create our apps you're an app developer. So you can put whatever you want here and call this Victor Apps LLC, whatever, just put whatever you want here or nothing. You can just put copyright, whatever. This is copyright you, your name, your app company, whatever you want. I'm just making that up and um, whatever, amazingapps.com. Just anything, just any sort of footer content.
Okay, so if we were to view this in the browser, we would not be able to uh, actually see PG uh, welcome yet. There's no way to uh, to get there yet. There's no way to sign in. There's no way to sign up yet. Just to test it within the login screen, let's create a super simple link to go to PG uh, PG Home just to see that it looks like I expect. The whole login system will require extensive jo uh, JavaScript, which we'll start on next time. But let's create a very simple login. Let's create a very simple button to go from login to, to home. So back into our PG login screen in the returning user in, in the article there, in the paragraph, just super simple. You don't even have to make it a real button. We're going to make it better later. We need an A tag. We'll just say go to home. Nothing special at all. Just href pound pg home. I'm not even going to add data roll button or anything. I just want to confirm. Does this look like it's supposed to? But there's no way to get to it. Even though it's in that sequence, it was sort of a trick question. Where do I copy and paste my home screen? The trick question was, you can paste it anywhere, actually. Because there's no way to get to that screen without some sort of navigation. But just in the flow of things, it makes sense. PG welcomes the very first thing we see. Then a person could go to PG sign up or PG login. Then a person goes to PG home. We'll eventually also have like PG options screen and such. But then the template is the very last thing because the user will never get there. This is not for the user. This is for you as a developer as a starting point for future screens. So from login, just a totally simple uh, button or link to go home. Then I want to see it. Control Shift Alt R for Chrome. I see it there. I log in, go home, goes home. I didn't set a, a transition, an icon, nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm at home. And I see my buttons, my nav bar. I see the title, the copyright, a little bit of text. And, um, should we put a back button? If we're on PG uh, PG Home, should I put a back button to go back where I came from? No. Yes. No. What? Why? Yes. Why? No. I would say, what's that? A log out button might make more sense. Log out exactly. I wouldn't really want a back button. I would want a log out button. So within this home screen, we're going to add a button not to log out. We're going to add an, an options button. Because then the options could be log out, switch user, delete the database, etc. So in our PG, um, PG home, we're going to put a button, an extra button up on the, na up on the header for options. So PG home H1 in the header um, after the nav bar, or actually um, after the heading one. We're going to add here an A tag called options. href linking over to pound pg options which doesn't exist yet so adding an a tag in the header will automatically make it a simple button with whatever text we wrote puts it there even though we wrote it after h1 it's before h1 and we didn't have to write we did not have to write data role so that was rather automatic but if we wanted something like an icon, 
we could add the data icon. We could add data roll button. That would be completely redundant. It just knows. If you've got an A tag in a header, it must be a button. So it behaves like a button. And if then I want an icon, OK, data icon. And then I put an icon of gear. I like the gear icon as options. But maybe I only want the I only want the um, I only want the icon, not the text. So we have data icon pos, data icon position. We used that previously to position the icon on the left or the right. But we've also got the value of no text. And it will only display the icon. Okay, so that's what I want. Um, I want uh, not a back button, not a logout button. I want an options button so that we go to an options screen so that then we can have those options log out, switch user, delete database, etc. We'll work on this screen next time. But at the moment, I've got here, if I start back at the beginning over here, we've got our PG welcome where you can go to the path of signing up. We're going to put a whole sign up system here, or go back. We've got then a login screen. Right now, temporarily, we've got go to home. We're going to remove that, of course. We're going to have, what's your username? What's your password? So it's going to check that. Once that is filled in and it recognizes you do exist in the system, it'll take you home. If it then says, oh, you don't exist, please sign up, it will take you back to sign up screen. If you then do sign up, it'll take you back to login. Once you log in, it'll take you home. Then, once you've signed in at least once, it'll remember you. And when the app loads up, it'll go automatically to PG Home. All of that actual interactivity, however, is going to be JavaScript. We're still going to set up some basic structural things in HTML, design stuff in CSS, interactivity in JavaScript. So again, approximately 280 lines of HTML approximately 137 lines of CSS and approximately 780 lines of JavaScript. In my case so far, I've got 117 of HTML. General, I'm going to wind down the lecture in a moment, but general questions on what we've talked about today? We're What's that? Password. I didn't hear the first part of your Where question. Would the password be? It's going to ask for your password when we are right here in login. We're still far away from that, but it'll be in the PG login. Any other general questions?